Radio, welcome back. This is a video for all of our Jayco Mercedes Sprinter owners. Full Victron system upgrade. Ripped out the old system, new system in. You will want to watch this because it's actually turned out wicked. While I start off, you'll notice sliding door. The customer turns up and wants to park in, you know, one location for ages. That runs off the starter battery. So we've left them an Anderson plug underneath the vehicle at the front here to plug in a solar blanket to trickle charge their starter battery. Now, one other very awesome thing about this vehicle is we've done 600 watts of solar on the roof whilst keeping Gen 2 Starlink, Mac Shacks, Shovel, and an aircon all on the roof rack, oh, and the awning as well. And then we've also added exterior lighting, but we'll go through it a bit more. But I've just got the van running, because I want to show you. Look at this bad boy, pumping in 100 plus amps. Obviously, like, if I turn off all our DC loads, you're getting 100 plus amps from the two 50 amp DC chargers. I'll just jump into one of them now so you can see the stats. But having a 680 amp hour lithium system, if the battery is completely flat, you've got roughly seven hours of driving or seven hours of running the alternator and the system will be completely fully charged. And because of the way we wire them and we wire it into the ignition wire, you turn the car off, guess what happens? The DC charges isolate instantly. So you've got no way or reason for draining your starter battery off of your auxiliary battery system. The only thing that would potentially drain it would be this electric sliding door, which we've installed the Anderson plug for underneath the exter exterior of the vehicle. Because if the battery is flat and this door doesn't open, you can't get into the car in there without the key. So you plug in a solar blanket into the Anderson plug, charge up the lead acid battery, or you can plug in an AC charger into that Anderson plug and charge up the battery that way. Get enough power to unlock the vehicle and then enough power to open the sliding door as well. And then we've got our 600 watts of solar. Where I've parked the van, half of the solar is uh, in the shade. Standard Mercedes Sprinter, the fit out by Jayco, all terrain model, all that jazz, they're all the same. They come with the projector system that used to have this screen up there that is not very nice. Now we've got our Victron servo screen up here, tank levels, no temperatures on this one, but a full comprehensive overview of what the Victron system gives. You'll see a little addition here. Now this is our external, we've got two external awning lights. So amber, warm white, cool white, all dimmable. You would have seen them in our past videos, but we've mounted them there so that they're underneath the awning so the customer can use them. So up the front, we've also still left the standard isolating switch that also does the hot water system and the water pump. So that will still work even without the screen. And then obviously the screen also has, like I showed you before, the tank levels on there. So you swipe across and you got your fresh water uh, rear and then your gray water at the front. That's actually two tanks, but it's just one tank sender because the tanks are plumbed together. So it uh, goes up. So walk into the back and this is where all the magic is. There used to be a battery box here and a battery box here. There used to be a DC charger like this. What we've done, full retrofitted the system styling gen 2 modem which you've got running in here as well you've got twin 50 amp dc chargers a 50 amp solar controller looking after the 600 watts of solar on the roof solar circuit breaker that's double pole to comply with the as3001 installation laws down the bottom there all our panels on the roof are also fused to comply we've got our label kit to comply, main fuse panel, midi fuse panel down here with our negative buzz bar. We've got another small fuse panel, which is looking after a lot of our Victron bits. And then, like I said, so we've kept this in. This is running the little three switch panel, which does the isolation power, the water pump, and the hot water system. So that's stayed as is. And then our servo unit is up here with our sealed battery box here. 300 amp manual reset circuit breaker and our shunt now 3 kva multi plus one other thing that we've had to do here to keep it compliant you need a physical barrier so we've installed between the water and your 240 
AC and 12 volt DC electrical as per your AS3001. So we've just installed makeshift walls, a physical barrier. So there's no way that any of the water or the plumbing in here can spill over into any of the electrical area. Inside the battery box, you've got two 340 amp hour lithiums. So 680 amp hours of lithium total. And then the only other thing that I haven't mentioned so far is just our AC input and output double pole RCBOs from Clipsil Max 9s. So that's doing our AC input and output from our inverter. On the screen, standard, turn the inverter on, use the aircon as we like, use, say, the sandwich press as we like. I'll just turn that on to like full cooling mode. Take you onto the roof. And as you'll see, we have got aircon up here, Gen 2 Starlink. There's a shovel holder that goes here, max tracks, and then three 200 watt solar panels all bolted to the roof rack. So you got 600 watts of solar on the long wheelbase printer while still having your aircon and whatnot. Because it's got the roof rack, it does have a max air fan and then a shower vent fan. But because it's got the roof rack, you can actually still have them open and working without interfering and they're just covered by the solar panels. So it actually works out quite well. One other thing we've added here as well, which we do on a lot of the sprinters that come from Jayco, is a power point here. Just so you've got a power point at this seat because they don't come with any power point accessible from that seat. There's just the USB socket at the front here. So now we've got our aircon on, which is pulling 920 watts. And I'm just gonna turn on sandwich press, which we got here. You'll see our inverter is cranking. Now it just came up inverter overload. That was just because the startup current exceeded what the inverter can handle. But now you can see we're pulling 2,500 watts. We're pulling 223 amps off of the uh, battery system. And then now, when I go to the battery system, because again, the way that we've wired them, like I showed you in the photo earlier, each battery will only be pulling half of that amount off it. So we've got 120 amps coming off one battery. And we've got 128 amps coming off the other battery. So. Pretty perfect for considering how the amount of uh, current draw that we got going on. That's pretty much it. But for a vehicle that is so widely on the market in Australia, they come with a very poor electrical system. Yes, you're gonna spend a little bit of money doing a system like this, but you're never gonna have to pay for a powered side ever again. You're gonna be able to use all the creature comforts fully off grid. If you need to pull up and make lunch in your microwave, you can, you know, you start a generator, you don't do any of that. The gas bottles in the rear, you can delete them. You can use that as extra storage underneath the bed at the rear there. Awesome way of finishing off a van that's, that, like fit out wise is an okay decent van, but the electrical system lets it down. If you've got a Jayco Sprinter and you're having DC charging issues, every single person I've talked to that's got a Jayco Sprinter it does have DC charging issues, get in touch, I'll help you out. And if you've got any questions about the vehicle, drop a comment, let me know, shoot us an email, give me a call, we're more than happy to discuss stuff like this because it's our bread and butter it's what we do every day